Good morning, everyone. So today we are staying in Southern California. We are currently in Costa Mesa for the three day weekend. And since we're gonna be out and about, I wanted to take this opportunity to take you guys around with the Canon R6. If you guys have seen my last video, we used the Canon R8 and reviewed it for different lighting conditions. It's definitely in much lower lighting. We tested out its battery life and its overall performance. And today, since I have the R6 with me, and this is kind of my alternative to the R8 since they have pretty much the same system. We've had this camera for about a year now and I wanted to do another day in the life with it just to kind of see how it's like performing in natural lighting and just things that you would kind of be doing out and about. Let you guys know what my thoughts are after a whole year of owning it. So if you're new to my channel, my name is Paula and let's get the day started with our R6 one year later review. our first stop here in Malibu. We're gonna have brunch right now in Malibu Farm Cafe, I believe. And it's right by the pier. We've never been out here, so let's go check it out. at our table. Lots of outdoor heaters out here so it's pretty warm and we are seated right by the ocean. I just want to talk to you guys about the couple things that I love about the R6 so far. So coming from the R8, the R8 only has two modes so C1 and C2 whereas the R6 has C1, C2, C3 so it helps me because in between switching from vlogging to filming b-roll and also 30 fps which is what I like to do for my vlog channel I have three modes to choose from here that just makes it easy to switch on and off um, both cameras do have the photo and video modes so it's easy to switch between those but yeah so far plus one for the R6 for the three shooting modes custom Three custom modes. Three custom modes. Here's Brian. Yeah. So we got the clam chowder in a bread bowl. And I got the breakfast burrito, some arugula salad, and avocado. Show you a little bit of our plate. My settings right now is F20. This is 24 FPS still. And I have 800 eyes. So everything is tried and logged. And I do have a mist filter on. So far, everything is still pretty crisp. I'm still sort of learning how to use the zebras and the histogram on the camera. So hopefully this is doing it justice. We're outside. It's very overcast today. We're gonna go ahead and enjoy our food. We got our breakfast. Hello everyone. So we are back in the room now after an hour and a half almost of driving from basically Malibu all the way out here back to Orange County. I think it added like maybe 20 minutes extra to our drive. Honestly, it wasn't really too bad. We knew that we were going to be driving quite a ways away anyway. I think each way was like 50 miles. 50 miles, 5-0. But since we have a little bit of downtime right now before we head back out, I wanted to talk to you guys about how the performance of the camera has been so far. So currently right now on my talking headshots, I've been using 24 FPS, 1 over 50 for shutter speed, and most of the time when I was outside, I was using F16 just because it was really bright. I'm still trying to improve how I'm using the histogram and also the zebras just to learn how to read it. So I'm hoping that this little exercise of mine will kind of help me understand how to look at it a little bit more. And of course, for those of you who have any tips for me, please let me know in the comments down below what you look for as far as the histogram and the zebras. I know there's a lot for me to learn. I just haven't had a chance to actually practice and this would be a good time for me to do that. But right now, so far, I think we're sitting at almost half the battery life. We left the hotel around 9 a.m. this morning and that's when we started 
filming off and on throughout the day. It is now 3 p.m. Half the battery is gone. So I'm probably gonna pop this back into the charger. Most of my shots outside, I did have the mist filter. I'll put the link of this filter that I was using in the description down below if you're ever curious about it. But this is basically just kind of giving more of that halation look anytime there is lighting, especially artificial lighting. It kind of just cuts down the harshness of it. So this is all I had. Also, another thing that I had knew I had a backup for is the battery life. Since we are hitting 50% right now, I did go ahead and bring a power bank with me. Since the R6 can be rechargeable through USB-C, that is something that I had a backup for. So I do have that in my pocket. But since we're back here in the hotel, I might just charge this back up. As you guys know, I'm coming from the R8. R8 is a lot more lightweight than the R6 as it is a slightly larger body. And the lens that I'm using today is the f2.8 16 to 35 mil and it's a longer barrel than the um, f4 that i had for my r8 oh i'm also using a bigger mic this is the rode shotgun mic which i'll also put in the description down below um, just so i don't mess up the exact model that it is but as far as the setup this is what i have for the r6 as the sun is setting we're gonna have different lighting conditions to test out so i'll be taking you guys along once we're kind of done refreshing for the day and then check back in with you guys later dog beach we've taken mochi here last november and he really liked it but let's go find our spot mochi all right let's go hello mom all the way up to f22 Now, before we dive deeper into the R6, let's talk a little bit about the gear that was used during this trip. Of course, we have the R6 Mark II paired with the 15 to 35 mil f2.8 lens, the Rode VideoMic Pro Plus, and the PGY Tech Mantis Pod 2. I also carried with me a mist diffusion filter from Polar Pro to soften the light and eliminate harsh looks on camera. Comparing the battery pack of the R6 to the R8, the R6 battery doubles the battery life of the R8s, coming in at 2130 mAh versus 1040 mAh. The R6 is also rechargeable via USB-C, so if you're in a pinch and you need to power up your camera to continue on, you can plug it into a USB-C outlet, or better yet, use a power bank to preserve the battery. The R6 comes with 5-axis in-body image stabilization, meaning enhanced stability for your footage. Along with this, the camera also has digital image stabilization, and you can enable this only with a slight crop. However, it is worth noting that this is what contributes to the wobble in your footage. Now, typically I prefer running it without digital IS turned on, but it wasn't until I was reviewing the footage in this last test that we had that I realized that it was actually on the whole time. Looking back, it's really not too bad, and the wobble is really only more obvious when it is at the widest angle. Between the R6 and the R8, both interfaces are pretty similar, 
but the R6 does have the addition of an extra custom shooting mode, more joystick controls in the back, as well as a more ergonomic size. Though the R8 is nice and compact, the R6 does win with the added stabilization, no signs of overheating, as well as a more comfortable grip size, which makes it an overall user-friendly experience. Speaking of user-friendliness, Canon in general has been a lot easier to use than a Sony. If I had to pick up a camera and didn't have much time to deal with customizing all of my settings, I would most likely pick up a Canon over a Sony. And I do want to point out that this portion of the video is filmed with my Sony a7S III only because I have my Canon sitting in front of me so that I can have them as reference for the video. But as you can see, there is a slight difference in the color science between the two and I feel like Sony does give a bit more of a cinematic feel. But of course, this is all based on preference. I personally like both looks, so I am curious. Let me know what you guys think of this Sony footage versus the Canon, comment below which one you like better. And lastly, I wanted to talk about the high frame rates in this camera. As you guys saw, we tested out taking slow motion video at the beach earlier. And one of the great things about the Canon R6 is that it has no crop at 4K60, whereas its Sony counterparts, the a7 IV and the a7C II, do have crops at 4K60. The R6 can also shoot up to 180 FPS, but only at 1080p resolution, which is still good if you drop it into a 4K timeline. Most people won't be able to tell the difference unless you are an eagle eyed camera pro. And that is it for today's Canon R6 one year later review. If you guys found this video helpful, please don't forget to leave us a thumbs up down below and of course subscribe for more tech and gear related videos. That is all for me. I will see you guys in the next video.